Okay. Awesome. Great. Well, let me get my, oh, you know what? I can't share my screen. Can someone give me permission so I can get my PowerPoint up? It's all yours, Jenna. Cool. Thank you. All right. Get this ready to go. And we're off and running. So hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining me for our information on the Health Sciences Mental Wellness Program. Um, I'm Jenna Tesso. I work here at Health Sciences in the Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, um, and I'm the Mental Health Counselor. So um, specifically, and I'll go into more specifics about, you know, the program and what I'm able to offer and, you know, how to get in touch with me and all that, um, but specifically um, providing individual counseling services um, to you guys. Uh, public health as well as pharmacy, um, and then different programming as well to all of the health sciences um, colleges too. So today, I think we have 45 minutes allotted for our time together. So we might get done a little bit early. Um, I do this presentation um, every year and everybody else has me do it for a shorter period of time. So I can talk a little slower um, for you guys and take my time a little bit more. Um, I actually was at um, on campus for College of Pharmacy live orientation this morning and how to do it like with a mask and it was horrible and my glasses fogged up the whole time. So here in my dining room is much, much more comfortable so we can take a breath. So, um, so what you can expect um, for the ne next little bit of time together, um, I'm going to go over, you know, just kind of basic mental wellness stuff, kind of some strategies to keep in mind as you start this graduate school experience. Um, obviously, you know, in 45 minutes, we're not gonna go crazy in depth, but just kind of some good foundation um, strategies. Also gonna talk kind of about, you know, some warning signs to look for in yourself that maybe our mental wellness is starting to falter a little bit. Um, and then I'll talk to you about um, the services that I'm able to provide um, here in the program and how to get in touch with me and all that good stuff. And um, I'll leave a little time, hopefully for questions at the end, but I'm super laid back. So feel free to just unmute yourself if you have any questions or comments as we go along. I'm really terrible about watching chats like while I'm screen sharing because I'm just terrible at it. So I will, I will miss those most likely if you chat at me during, but feel free to just, just unmute yourselves. So there we go, let's hop in. Um, I'm big into putting pictures into my PowerPoints. Um, so this picture here, a um, little backstory. Um, my husband is, um, he's a Kurdish immigrant from Turkey and we actually met in Chicago um, and then came out to Arizona, but I, I was born here and stuff. And I was really excited to show him Arizona and to show him the Grand Canyon. He was so excited to finally see the Grand Canyon. Um, and I'm a terrible planner. Um, I just kind of assumed like, oh, like it's end of April, this will be beautiful. Actually, I guess it was end of March. So we drive all the way up there, pretty big trek. And we get to the viewing point and like, this was the view. Um, so, it was a huge disappointment. I was devastated. I was like, oh no, um, but I'm gonna loop back around to this because it might've gotten a little bit better. Um, so basically, you know, this is kind of a whole new world. Um, this is, you will soon find that this is very, very different from your undergraduate experience. Um, and that's actually pretty cool. And it's very exciting, um, but sometimes we kind of come in with certain expectations that it's just gonna kind of be this extension of what we've already experienced. Um, and I think that most people find that it's actually kind of like a whole new, um, really kind of like a whole new world, a whole new way of being a student um, and a professional and all that. Um, and, you know, I had pretty unrealistic expectations, for example, of my trip to the Grand Canyon, right? Um, part of that was my fault for not informing myself and doing what I needed to do. And I was like, oh, this is going to be beautiful. And then you saw what I saw. Um, so very disappointing, right? And that's, that's really with anything. Um, most disappointment that we feel 
stems from unrealistic expectations that we hold. Um, so what I really like to do kind of in support of, of mental wellness is to, you know, if we can kind of reframe how we're looking at things, because we're always kind of living kind of one step in the future, right? And kind of playing out in our minds, kind of this movie of, you know, what a new experience might be like. Um, so I like to try to flip the script from like, okay, I have this expectation of exactly how it's going to be and kind of treat it more like a science experiment. So becoming like really open to like, I'm just going to go do this, see what happens, any possibilities that happen, happen, um, and really kind of come from a place of curiosity rather than expectations of exactly what it's going to be. Um, you know, expectations are still going to pop up. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit today about, you know, having good expectations, but also having to balance that out with being realistic about that there will be some, you know, not so great days as with anything um, in our life, of course. Um, and it can be really comforting to know that like basically everything, um, this is temporary. Um, starting out, you know, like first days, it seems like, oh my gosh, like depending on how your, how your academic plan goes, what you're doing, you know, we're looking at minimum two years probably, right? Um, and that seems like a really, really long time today, probably. Um, but it goes by pretty fast, actually. By the time it's done, you'll be pretty amazed how quickly it goes by. Um, and keeping in mind, you know, this is temporary, um, can help us get through the not so great days um, and also appreciate, I think, the days that are actually pretty great. So um, I like to kind of go into things with that mindset as well. So back to the Grand Canyon. You saw that awful picture from before when I arrived. Um, I was so upset. And so we like went into some little, I don't know, like visitors center or something. Came back out like maybe 10 minutes later. And this is what we saw. So like the clouds were dissipating. There was this awesome rainbow like dipping into the canyon. And I was like, yes, like this is amazing. So it's like, we just waited it out even after that initial disappointment. You know, we could have just like gone back to a car and been all upset and missed this great experience. And we ended up having a great time, you know? Um, so we do have to have, you know, when it comes to ourselves in graduate school, um, and our confidence in our own abilities. Um, having some expectation that we're going to succeed is really important. Um, and the ways that we can really kind of build that within ourselves, um, and I'm gonna preface this by saying, these aren't things you do once. Um, it's kind of like, if you were like, if you had a goal of like, okay, I wanna build up my bicep muscles, you wouldn't do one bicep curl and then be like, well, that didn't work. You do a lot of bicep curls at least a few times a week, right? For an extended period of time. Um, so I have learned um, throughout my years of experience to, to actually you know, ex explain kind of that metaphor because when we're training our mind <laughs> to do things, it's actually, I think way harder than training our bodies to do things. So preface that with this, this all takes practice. So kind of practicing flipping the switch into more positive, self-talk we tend to um, it's kind of like you know how we're like more likely to leave a negative Yelp review for a restaurant than a positive one like for some reason the negativity kind of spirals us a little bit more and and especially towards ourselves um, so really working on focusing on positive self-talk looking for the good in things um, one way to do that I know it's very trite um, you know I know all the you know, all the Brene Browns and the Oprahs talk about, you know, like gratitude, um, gratitude lists and stuff like that. But it really can help because when we're focusing on what we're grateful for, um, we start to see it more. Um, it's kind of like this lens that we put on. And some days it's literally like, I'm glad I have a coffee today to drink, you know, to kind of get me through. Um, but just focusing on the positive um, is a really good mental frame of mind to be working from a good amount of the time. Um, but then we also have to be realistic, you know, and we have to expect that we're gonna have a little failure from time to time, because we are just human beings, you know, and there are going to be bad days, there's going to be things you're not getting academically, 
you might forget to do an assignment or not prioritize your time in a way that allows you to finish it on time. You know, we all kind of have those fumbles. Um, like when I was working on my doctorate, I totally missed an email um, with that had a deadline in it. And my whole graduation ended up getting pushed back a whole semester, you know? And it's like, oh, I thought that was just like the worst thing, right? And like, it wasn't like, I'm fine. I'm fine now, I recovered. Um, you know, you make it through those things. Um, so they're very temporary things. Um, sometimes those things seem like a big crisis in the moment. Um, but when you look back, you're like, I hardly ever think about that. <laughs> Usually only when I'm talking to just students about it. So um, it is a very temporary thing and reminding ourselves is really important. Um, you know, and everything, um, every aspect of our life is very interconnected. So any aspect of our life can affect our own mental wellness uh, and vice versa. Our mental wellness can obviously affect how we're functioning in any area. Um, so as a student, um, I think it's really, really important um, to understand your natural working style. And like when I create these orientation PowerPoints, I always, um, I always take into consideration, like what are the biggest things that that I hear from students um, as these, these kind of like hot spots that come up that they're, that they're wanting assistance with. Um, and one thing that I've noticed is sometimes like students really come in and you're fighting against your natural working style because you think there's a certain um, way to be a graduate student. And if you're not doing it exactly the same way as everybody else, you're not doing it right um, or you're failing at it. And that's just not true. So the more we can work with kind of like our natural tendencies and patterns, um, the better. So really understanding how do you work best? You know, are you a night owl who studies best at night? Do you like to get up and get it done? Do you sit down for a long time and can focus that way? Or do you need a break every 30 minutes? Um, really knowing that about yourself. And I think at the beginning uh, right now is a good time to really kind of reflect on that before you jump into the heavy um, academic stuff. Um, so you can kind of go in with a plan that suits you. Because um, if you're not fighting against yourself, uh, that's really good for your, for your overall mental wellness, for sure. Goals. Uh, so obviously working at the university, um, most everybody I work with is pretty goal oriented, knows how to set goals, has set a lot of them and achieved a lot of them, um, which is wonderful. Um, it's wonderful to be, uh, to have goals and to achieve them. And that's actually really good for our mental health. Every time we achieve even a little goal, um, we kind of, you know, get this hit of all these feel good chemicals, uh, help spike depression and things like that. Um, so goals are really important, um, but sometimes we can get too rigid around our goals. Um, and it can be like too, like an unhealthy dose of a good thing. So creating goals is really important, but building in and allowing yourself some flexibility is also really, really important. Um, you know, and, and kind of the way I think of it is, you know, it's really important to identify what our goals are and know kind of what direction we're heading in. Um, and then with that, kind of keeping in mind that there's a lot of different ways to reach the same goal. So your, your timeline, might look a little bit different from other people's or the way that you do it or your style of doing it. Um, and that's okay. At the end of the day, you get there. Um, and being willing to change goals as you grow and change and learn more is also really important. Um, a lot of inner turmoil can rise from, you know, let's say for example, you know, I, I'll give you a personal example. Like I, I just totally thought, you know, I'm going to be totally a private practice clinician. That's what I'm going for. That's what I want to do. I pictured myself like wearing statement jewelry and like making a ton of money in private practice and stuff like that. And um, I started to work in that type of part of the field and I like hated it. Um, it was horrible. I was like, oh no, like I chose like the whole wrong career and all this time spent on my education it was a waste. Um, it's it really difficult when we do what we think we wanted to do and we find out like, oh, I don't really want to do that. So we have to be willing to change our goals, you know? Um, and so now I still do have a small private practice, uh, 
Um, and I'm very particular about the niche that I work with. So I do that on Fridays. And then I'm here at the university doing this type of work um, that has a little more variety for me Monday through Thursday. I'm way happier than if I had insisted on staying with that initial goal that I had set for myself. So you've gotta be willing to change um, kind of as you learn more about yourself. I love this dog. Um, so Self-care, I am gonna talk about this for just a second. I know it's another like hot topic. Everybody talks about self-care and bubble baths and you know, all that, all that good stuff. Um, but it is really important. One of the reasons, um, and I'll touch on this again a little in a little bit when I'm talking about mental health warning signs, um, kind of these simple things like the nutrition and exercise, um, sleep, rest, um, they're like the boring part of mental health, but they're the most important. So they're like the foundation, everything else is built upon. Um, and they are also generally the very first things that we all tend to let slide when we're starting to not do so great uh, from a mental wellness standpoint. Um, so really making sure we're paying attention to these things um, as small as they might seem, as boring as they might seem, um, it's very, very um, important. Balance. Um, I do not know who this is because I don't watch these types of movies. I'm like more of a comedy person, but I do like this meme. I've had it up like every year for like three years when I do this. Some of you probably know who this is, um, but balance. Um, balance, I always like to touch on. I'm gonna preface that by saying, when I talk about balance and mental wellness, I always like kind of like, I, I always think of life like in terms of like a pie, you know, and balance, true balance would be like every slice of the pie is the same size, right? Um, but sometimes in life, like graduate school, you know, we've kind of committed ourselves to something for a period of time that is gonna take up like a bigger slice of the pie. Um, so that's okay if you're academics for the next few years, do take up a bigger slice of the pie. We just can't totally ignore all the other slices. We still, you know, gotta cut them into, even if they're in smaller pieces, they need to be included in the whole pie. Um, you know, so really kind of looking at, am I taking care of my health as well? Am I seeing friends and family that I care about? Am I doing things that just I enjoy and taking care of myself? Do I have other obligations like work or other responsibilities that I need to attend to? These are all just kind of things um, to keep in mind um, and finding the balance that works best for you based on your, your priorities um, and obligations and all that. And this is a little strategy um, that I like to use um, about like, when, when do we say no to things? When, when do we decide that there's too much on our plate and how do we you know, differentiate between what we should be taking on and what we should be take, saying no to? Um, and by this, I mean like not just academic stuff, um, you know, write this paper with me, get involved in this research, you know, take on this, this project that might be happening, but also in our personal lives, like even like, you know, getting invited to a social event, um, you know, or doing a favor for somebody or playing a sport, whatever it might be, anything in life. Um, so learn to say no, but also when to say yes so that things are in line with your personal priorities and values is super important, you know. Um, and so what I like to do, I learned this strategy many years ago and I really like it. Um, so if we kind of set our default to just no, our default is we're saying no. However, we're not really gonna say no to everything because we're gonna ask ourselves some questions um, that's gonna determine whether we, that we do value that and it will add value to our lives. And those questions that I ask myself, and you can take this or make your own that are important to you, but the ones I ask myself are, is this something that's gonna help me reach a goal that I've set for myself? Um, is it something that might help me better myself in some way? Um, or is it something that I'm gonna enjoy? If I really, really wanna do something, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Um, the example I always give for this is, um, I like kids pretty well, but I hate children's birthday parties. Um, and there's something about my generation that like my parents never invited their friends to our childhood birthday parties, but like all my friends with kids invite all their friends to their kids' birthday parties. And that's just absolute torture to me. And I used to go, and I'd be angry 
because I'm like, oh, my Saturday afternoon, I'm like resentful. Um, and then I don't go anymore. <laughs> and that's way better, um, you know, because I didn't, wasn't helping me reach my goals, wasn't helping me better myself. And I really, really did not like it. So I was not enjoying it. So, you know, it's for, for big and little things, we can, we can apply this. Um, and it's, it can be very helpful for, for prioritizing and making sure we're doing things that really matter to us or that we just really like. Um, next up, working to exhaustion, not a badge of honor. Um, if I had a dollar for every time I have heard a student say to me, I can't go to the gym because I feel guilty because I should be spending that time studying, I would be totally into early retirement by now. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. I hear that all the time. Um, for the gym and other things, anything that's kind of like for yourself. Um, and kind of this, um, I run into a lot kind of this um, faulty, this faulty cognition of like, oh, okay, if I'm in graduate school or in pharmacy school or medical school or whatever, I have to be spending literally all my time studying. Um, and that's just not gonna work um, for you. So the way I always like to think of it is, you know, poor physical health, and poor mental health, um, it's only going to impact your academics negatively. So doing things like going to the gym, getting good rest, taking a little time away, um, ultimately that's gonna help you. It's gonna help your studying sessions. You're gonna retain things better. You're gonna be calmer. Um, ultimately, I like to think of that as part of a student's study plan. Um, and our brain can only focus for like 90 minutes at a time max anyways. So please take a break at least every 90 minutes because anything you're doing after that, it's just working against you. So write down 90 minutes and remember to, to get up and take at least like a little 10 minute break to, to give your brain a little time to breathe and take a reset. Okay, warning sign. So these are things you can look for in yourself, um, things you can look for in others. Um, and again, the basics usually across the board are the very first things to go. Um, so by that, I mean your sleep. So for some people that might mean I have insomnia all of a sudden. For other people that might mean I'm, you know, sleeping 16 hours a day. Everybody's a little bit different in how that presents. Um, but our sleep is a really big barometer of just how well we are doing from a mental health standpoint. Um, as is our appetite. And again, that can go either way. We might lose our appetite or find that we're eating a lot, maybe to comfort ourselves or to cope. Um, so those are a couple things to really keep an eye on, as well as, you know, if you notice like, oh man, I used to really, you know, I used to really enjoy being social and I'm suddenly finding that I'm avoiding that um, or having really low energy or low motivation across the board um, or also anxiety that's that really affects your functioning. Um, so, you know, it's hard for me to go to school. It's hard for me to get my work done, hard for me to have my normal relationships. Um, when it starts to impact our functioning is really when we get concerned. We're all gonna be a little anxious sometimes, um, but when it's affecting your ability to function in any area of your life, that's when we start to get kind of concerned from a mental health standpoint. Um, and then obviously kind of the, the bigger red flags are, you know, if we start to experience some suicidal ideation um, or start engaging, you know, like self-harming behaviors, um, obviously that's, that's something that would need some, um, that would benefit from reaching out to a professional immediately. All right, I see some chats, I'm gonna check in real quick, see if there's anything. Oh, oh, thank you. Thanos, love it, okay. What nice comments, you guys, thank you. Um, okay, so um, talk a little bit about what I, what I do here um, and how I can hopefully be of some assistance. So um, right now I am still doing everything remotely, which is um, pretty great. At first I had a really hard time. Like it was weird for me to, to be like working in the back room and then like coming out um, and like living my life in my living room. Um, but I've gotten, gotten it figured out by now. Um, so it's pretty great. Um, I've actually found it makes scheduling much easier. 
it's more private, like way less no shows and reschedules. Um, so it's working out really, really well. Um, so I do all sessions through HIPAA compliant Zoom. Um, so it's totally private. Um, and the services that I can um, provide are um, assessment. Um, I can do brief individual therapy if it's something um, you know, that as we're working together, I start to say, ah, oh, this is going to need kind of like longer term um, therapy than maybe what I'm able to provide here at the university. I will absolutely help them to, you know, refer you to somebody, you know, if you have insurance that you want to use, we can, you know, find you somebody in the community um, who can establish kind of like a more ongoing long-term relationship. Um, but certainly I'm able to provide um, more brief individual therapy, um, you know, and referrals to, there's a ton of different campus and community resources. Um, so happy to help connect you with that if that's more what you're needing. I do a lot of trainings um, throughout the year on mental health and wellness topics. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll do, you know, college specific things. Um, or I'll kind of coordinate, you know, having guest speakers come in and do events. Um, I also teach at least three times a year mental health first aid. Um, so usually um, at least once a semester, I have to do at least three a year to keep my certification up. Um, so minimum of three times a year. So you'll probably see, you know, flyers and stuff for that. Um, and that's an eight hour training. Um, it's pretty, comprehensive. We go over a lot of different um, topics, signs, and symptoms of somebody who might be in a mental health crisis and kind of walk through the steps of how to intervene um, in a variety of different um, crisis situations. Um, so that's fun. So that's, I've been doing that all virtual as well. They developed a, a virtual program when COVID started. So um, that's really nice to so be on the lookout for that and other things um, that I might be doing. I do different workshops like on, you know, like test anxiety and, and all kinds of things. So, um, so that's fun too. And that's kind of the, um, the thing that I like about my work here is that it gives me kind of the, that variety and that, that ability to be a little bit creative with that stuff as well. Oh, and I see some of you. Oh, awesome. Some of you are familiar and have some experience with mental health first aid. It's a really, really great comprehensive program. All right. So schedule an appointment with me. Um, all you need to do is, let me pull up this website here. So I work for the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. So that's kind of my, where my little corner of the internet is. So this will take me to my page, but I'll show you what the main page looks like. Um, so the page of my department is just diversity.uahs.arizona.edu. And over here at the top, kind of on the right is my domain over here. Um, so this will take you to my page and there's me from a few years ago, my hair was way shorter then. Um, goes over again, you know, kind of the things that I have to offer and then there's a few ways you can get a hold of me if you would like to schedule an appointment. You can just click right here on the student referral form. Literally all that does is pops up an email and sends me an email. So you can also just send me an email and that's fine. Um, and just let, yeah. We're just, we're yeah, go ahead, Michael. We're, oh. we're seeing your slides still. Oh, geez, okay. Well, I think that's because I only was sharing them. Let me share my other screen. Can you see it now? Awesome. So I became a, I went into social work and therapy and all that because I'm not good at technology or math. Um, so bear with me. Um, so sorry. So this is um, the equity, diversity, and inclusion page. That's at diversity.uahs.arizona.edu. And then right here, now that you can see it, is my page. If you scroll down. There's my short hair. Like I said, everybody I'm sure wants to see that. Um, so the student referral form, this link is right here. Um, but again, that just sends me an email. So you can also just send me an email either way you prefer. Um, just let me know your name, that you're with College of Public Health. You can feel free to kind of let me know a little bit of what's going on, kind of give me a, give me a heads up. Um, 
you know, just let me know that you'd like to schedule something and then I'll coordinate with you. We'll coordinate our schedules and a time to meet um, and kind of go from there. Um, you can call me as well, but I'm way easier to get a hold of um, by email because obviously I don't answer my phone if I'm meeting with people and I'm meeting with people of large majority of the time. So it just kind of turns into this awful phone tag experience. Um, so email is much better. Um, and you can just reach out directly to me there. And then there's also here, if you scroll down on this page, we have a lot of different uh, mental wellness resources kind of organized by category here. Um, and each of these has a lot of different links to other um, campus and community resources as well. So you can feel free to kind of go and explore that. So I'm gonna stop sharing this. I'm gonna get us back to my slides. All right, slides are back. Excellent, okay, great. Um, and I should mention, um, the thing that's kind of cool about my program here is um, I'm, I'm totally separate. I am not a part of CAPS. CAPS is wonderful, um, but I'm totally, totally separate from them. And the services are totally free and confidential. So I actually have a whole, my whole own electronic health record that I oh, am the only person who has access to. Um, so it's absolutely completely confidential. We don't, um, you know, we don't mess around with insurance or anything like that. Like there's no money involved. You just reach out to me. This is totally no cost to you. Doesn't go on your insurance record. Um, does it go on your student record? Nothing like that. Um, so hopefully that removes, you know, some, some barriers for folks. Um, when I was in person, I was in the nursing building um, kind of for extra um, privacy uh, for you guys. Um, but I think I'll be doing remote for quite some time because my, I have like one of the internal offices and it's like literally the size of a broom closet. Like I don't think it's even six feet across. So there's no, no way to social distance. Um, and I really need to see people's faces to be a good therapist because most of our communications just are facial expressions and body language and stuff. So um, Zoom for now. Um, I always like to give people crisis lines just to have. Um, so I am here Monday through Thursday. My hours are eight to six. I'm off on Fridays at my private practice and on the weekends, of course. So um, you won't be able to get a hold of me during those hours because I believe in strong boundaries and work-life balance, but there are resources for you. So um, there is the Pima County crisis line, which is that 520-622-6000 number. Um, that's a line that you can call 24 seven. Um, there's always somebody there. Um, if you're experiencing a mental health crisis or if, if you know somebody who is. And then Maine uh, Camp Cap has an after hours line as well. And they always have an on-call after hours crisis clinician that you can speak to on the phone as well. Um, so that number is 520-621-3334. Um, if the options haven't changed since the last time I checked, should be option one to speak to um, the after hours clinician on call. Um, so that, brings us to, to the end there. So I'm gonna stop sharing and we have, you know, we've got about 10 minutes spared left over. If you guys have any questions. Um, yes, and I'm sorry, it's uh, Counseling and Psychological Services, it's CAP um, is what it stands for. And I'm, I'm the person specifically, uh, it's interesting at U of A, some colleges have their own dedicated person or small team of people, others don't. Um, so I'm kind of the person dedicated specifically to health sciences, but CAPS also sees everybody. So if there's something that like, um, they have a little more extended hours as well. So they have like more into the evening. So, you know, sometimes maybe somebody's schedule doesn't work with my schedule, CAPS also, you are welcome to use CAP services anytime because any student can utilize those services. Um, and they have like a ton of groups and, and that kind of stuff because they just have a much larger staff and a little more capacity to do those kinds of things. So it's definitely worth um, checking out that as a resource as well, uh, for sure. So with that, any questions? And you can put them in the chat or un unmute yourself. Um, 
Ah, yes. Thank you, Michael. So feeling, um, so Michael asked, you know, um, any tips for um, folks who may find themselves feeling disconnected from the program um, or from fellow students. Um, and, you know, we ran into this quite a bit. I, th I think it happens even in when we're in person. Um, it's really, I don't know about you guys, like I find it really hard as an adult to make friends. Like that was so easy when we were kids. And as an adult, like I've literally, like I think I've literally Googled like how to make friends. Like um, it's really intimidating. Um, and luckily when you come to something like this, you already have something in common. At least you have some common interests and values, obviously. So that's good. Um, you know, and we would see this even live and in person, but especially with, with COVID and being virtual most of the time, it's even harder to, to connect, um, you know, and, and make those connections. So my advice, I, I think the hardest, I think what really keeps us from doing that is that fear of like, oh, like, how do I reach out to somebody and make a friend? Like, I, I really think that's kind of at the core of it. Um, so I would say really like face that fear and like put yourself out there if you can. And we all probably have different comfort levels with that. Um, you know, and a good way to start is, you know, there's a lot of different things just kind of within the college um, that you can get involved in. Um, you know, there's different committees and they do, um, is it the What's Up Wednesdays, Michael? Are you guys still doing that? Um, so, you know, there, keep an eye out in your emails for those events and stuff, because I think that's always a good place to start, because um, it's a little less pressure on you, but you might, you know, you'll start to get familiar with some faces um, and maybe be able to, to connect with people. So I think really pushing yourself, um, you know, kind of to the, to the edge of that comfort a little bit. Um, so going to those things, even if you're like, nah, I don't know, try it out. Like you might really, really like it. If not, then you don't have to do it again. Um, you know, and I think also I can guarantee you, you know, if you're feeling a little isolated, like everybody's feeling isolated right now. Um, if you feel kind of like, oh, I might want to like reach out to this person and, you know, depending on your comfort level and, and everything else, you know, maybe let's go grab grab a coffee or do a Zoom coffee thing or whatever, you know, like most people would like, honestly, like we're all so scared to do it. But if somebody reached out to me and wanted to do that, I'd be like, oh my gosh, yes. Like somebody might like me, you know, like, so kind of like flip the script and be like, actually, you know, if you think about actually to like be on the receiving end of that would feel pretty cool probably. So I think it's just kind of taking initiative um, for those. And like, look at Lauren go there. That's what I'm talking about. Like, put yourself out there. You know, a lot of times people, I mean, humans are, we're, we're totally social beings, you know, we thrive on that. And so chances are the person that, that you're reaching out to or people you're reaching out to also want to connect. So I think it's, it's just kind of like pushing past that fear. I promise you will survive. Um, and kind of doing that and just being on the lookout and looking outside also, also outside of the college too, you know, even if you just kind of Look within the health sciences. There's a lot of different, you know, clubs and committees and and things like that. So really, kind of tuning into picking picking, you know, one or two things to maybe get involved. And I know you guys are already busy, um, but it can be a nice way to add to add that balance with like-minded people and kind of build community which in, within the the college as well. So that would be my advice. So. Any other questions I can I can address for you guys? No. All right. Well, thank you all so much for for having me and listening to my spiel. Um, and again, feel free um, shoot me an email um, and reach out and you know let me know if there's anything I can do for you. My door is always open and. Have so much fun. This is exciting. Um, hope you guys really enjoy the semester um, and all of that. So with that, I guess we will sign off. Thanks Thank so much, so Jenna. Much. Awesome. Michael, we've Bye. been right on top. Thank you so much, Jenna. <laughs> you bet. Good. I know I'm always like watching my time. I tend to get long-winded. So I'm always like super proud when I, when I keep it under. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Good to see you.